Good evening, Professor Sumio Ijima. It is my great pleasure to welcome you for this online interview organized by Royal Microscopical Society. Uh, first of all, I'd like to briefly introduce uh, Professor Sumio Ijima about his career. Professor Ijima uh, got his PhD in Tohoku University in Japan and then moved to Arizona State University in 1970 where he developed his own career as a top scientist using the cutting edge of transmission electron microscope. Since 1982, Sumio Ijima joined a Japanese national project for researches of ultra-fine particles, then started to work for an electronics company in Japan, NEC, where he eventually discovered the famous helical microtubules by transmission electron microscope, which is later known as the carbon nanotubes. Professor Ijima has received many honors from all over the world. We can tell a part of them, such as Benjamin Franklin Medal, Balzan Prize, the Cavalry Prize, the Prince of Asturias Award, John Cavalry Medal, and so on. So he is also academy members of United States, Norway, Japan, and China. So good evening, Sumio. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank okay, you very so... much for that nice introduction. And uh, this kind of leg, uh, interview is the first thing to, so uh, I'm not sure I can do it also, but I, I'll do my best. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. So um, I would like to have, uh, 10 or more questions just to following your career. So it would be nice if you could uh, give us some comments on that. Okay, so let me start. So you are one of the most famous electron microscopists in the field of material science. So we should like to know how you chose this field and when was your first contact to the electron microscopes? Okay, um, the, uh, I was doing something else. When I was an undergraduate student, I was measuring electrical communication. Then uh, I changed my course to the uh, physics. So uh, I, I went to the Tohoku University measuring the uh, physics in faculty um, the department, Depart faculty science department. Then uh, I met the uh, my boss, um, my the uh, teacher, uh, Professor Hevey, first time. Until that, I haven't seen a real microscope. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. Then uh, that was my first experience to see the uh, electron microscope. But at that time, the, uh, the before, just before the 1970, so microscopes are rather primitive and not uh, high resolution, uh, the uh, microscope at, at all. But the, Anyway, so that was first uh, the uh, the uh, meat meat of uh, the microscope to me. Okay, so uh, but uh, what was your first impression when you saw this kind of electron microscopes, and did you find it is quite fascinating or? Well, the. Uh... My teacher, Professor Hebe, is uh, one of the pioneers of electron microscopy in Japan. And uh, he is interested in the instrumentation. Um, also, he's uh, building the, his own the interferometry of uh, electrons. Um, but the, I was doing the, uh, some application using the conventional electron microscope. Um, okay. So uh, that was the beginning of my career, and uh, the uh, but the uh, the microscope is uh, is a very very interesting to me, and and I, I thought this is it, and okay. I, I got the right choice, and and after that I I go went straight to the uh, this field. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, soon after your PhD in Tohoku University, you moved to Arizona State University in 1970. So would you please explain why you went to Arizona? Yes, I finished my PhD in 1960, uh, 
eighty uh sorry nineteen sixty um eight sixty eight yes then uh, the uh, I did uh, nearly one year as a research assistant with the uh, professor Hebe. And then uh, I, I, I started to think of moving to towards the, some some other countries, and uh, the first the uh, invitation from the, the uh, Professor Kauri um, asked the uh, not me but the uh, at that time the associate professor in, in Professor Hivi's uh, uh, laboratories, but uh, he just came back from the Chicago University. Uh, he was visiting there. Um, so uh, he couldn't uh, accept his invitation to go to the Arizona State. So instead, I, I was asked, why don't you go to, to there? That's the beginning of uh, my career with uh, Professor Kamri at, uh, at Arizona State University. Okay, so thank you. So you are kind of substitute for for someone, but finally you met the Professor Cowley in Arizona State. Very nice. Okay, so please let us know about your research in Arizona State uh, University, and just uh, let us know the the research circumstances in Arizona. Well, the uh, Professor the, the John Cowley they moved to the Arizona State from Melbourne University in the same year, 1970. And I think that he went there in 1970, the uh, March. Then I joined with him the uh, September. So uh, John Cowley just started a new laboratory at uh, the Arizona State University. And I was, uh, the, you know, joined the, his group, but the, I was the first postdoc uh, uh -huh, there. Okay. And so, so uh, and he had the, uh, the three sort of project. One is building the uh, high voltage scanning microscope, and the other is what what they call the MIDI, a uh, medium range, medium the uh, acceleration the. Uh, surface diffraction the, uh, the device. Um, then uh, other one is the high, high resolution microscopy. That's uh, I, I, I took it over. So uh, at the beginning, um, the, uh, he bought the Japanese director microscope, um, the GEM. GEM, the, at that time, they called GEM 100B. Um, so uh, resolution is not so good at that time. And also, um, the goniometer stage is uh, the uh, I I was uh, working with the crystal. So good uh, the uh, the uh, the goniometer stage is uh, necessary for my experiment uh, experiment. So uh, uh, I did a little bit uh, the modification uh, on that uh, uh, JOL microscope. The, uh, the yes, I the uh, I know how to use the pointed the filament. The, this is important. Okay, pointed filament was discovered invented by the professor professor Hebe, and uh, the. Uh, this pointed filament I, I attached to this new the JOL microscope. So uh, usually at that time people use the what they call the hairpin hairpin type uh, the uh, filament. But if instead I, I put the uh, my the pointed filament on, on, on that that instrument because this give gave us a little bit of bright uh, the uh, electron so, so that easy to adjust the, the, to, to tune the electron beam um, so uh, that helped a lot and and, and uh, fortunately I, I I could get the uh, very good uh, high, high resolution the, uh, images of crystals so uh, at the beginning, uh, I, I was very lucky. And uh, soon after, less than one year, I could get the uh, sort of, sort of uh, the uh, atomic image of crystal. So, 
So uh, that is uh, my good start there. Okay, thank you. Of course, we remember the very nice uh, uh, paper in 1971 that you show very beautiful crystal images using the high resolution electron microscopy. So it was just one year after you went to Arizona State. So we are very much impressed about this, um, um, your, uh, your, how can I say, your efficiency to, <laughs> to use the microscope. But you, you told us that you found a Japanese microscope there. But uh, so far as I understand, um, in this uh, age, I think that Siemens uh, was dominating the microscopy market. So uh, what? So what was the difference at that time? The, the material science research was how it was done for the material research using the Siemens. And... Well, well, the uh, at the beginning of 1970, and this, at that uh, until that, the uh, most of microscopists are using the uh, sort of uh, the Siemens or uh, conventional microscope because they don't need their really high resolution. Because they are mm -hmm. looking at the dislocation, the stacking fault, and so on. So uh, the, then, uh, the, uh, after you know, the, we actually started the high resolution microscopy of material. So uh, we really need the uh, the high resolution in order to see the uh, atoms or, or columns of atoms in the crystal. So. Uh, uh, at that time, the uh, I, I think the Siemens Elviscope two microscope, yeah, I'm not sure, and the Philips microscope, the, those are the, the uh, dominant the, the in in world market, and mm -hmm. Japanese microscope are a little bit behind them. And uh, the beginning of of this 1970, the Japanese instrument uh, started to 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 do the good job. So okay. Hitachi and J O. So uh, again, I was very lucky <laughs> to use uh, this J uh, O microscope. Okay, so the um, I think this is a uh, timing for the microscopist to, to change the subject from uh, grain boundaries or dislocations or stacking forth to the to the real atomic image of the crystals and. Um, you did a very uh, uh, pioneering work in 1971, as, as early as 1971. Okay, so then so uh, then we moved next because you visited Cambridge for a while during stay, your stay in Arizona State University. So who did you meet there and what did you do in the research in Cambridge? Well, the uh, um, during the uh, work at, at the Arizona State University, and uh, there was the uh, interesting argument among the uh, microscopists, and that is about the imaging of amorphous amorphous silicon, because in, mm -hmm. in 1970, it's the beginning of uh, use of uh, the amorphous silicon for the solar panel materials. So uh, there was a big argument about the uh, what is amorphous, how are the atoms are arranged in amorphous phase. So uh, some the microscopes the challenge to to image the uh, amorphous uh, silicon. So uh, I, I started to, because people are doing the uh, on the silicon, the amorphous silicon. So uh, I started with, with carbon, okay, amorphous carbon, and then. Uh, then uh, I, I think the uh, 1979 uh, or 80, and the uh, Cambridge, the uh, the Dr. Michael Stop, uh, he passed away actually. Um, he asked me to to come to Cambridge, and also at that time the uh, Professor David Smith. Also visiting the uh, the Cambridge in, in the microscope group, so uh, the, the, then I, I I joined their group uh, to do the uh, basically the uh, imaging the amorphous materials. So uh, because 
those in, experience is very important because uh, later on I, I, I came across with the, the uh, carbon nanotube. This is carbon material, okay? So before mm -hmm. that, uh, I, I had done some work on, on uh, amorphous carbon or graphitic carbon as a different type of carbons. So uh, I think this experience is also very important to, to later on, I, I, I discovered carbon nanotubes. So then I, I, I spent the uh, nearly half a year in, in Cambridge um, in 1970, yeah. Mm -hmm. 1970, 1980, yes. 1980, sorry, sorry, right. Okay. Uh, so uh, also the, uh, the, uh, in, in Arizona, the, uh, I was doing the mostly the uh, experiment, uh, taking uh, good pictures. And also, the, of course, John Cowley is a theoretician on electron diffraction physics. So uh, he also started to do the uh, image calculation using the dynamic, dynamical dif electron diffraction. So there was a bunch of the uh, the uh, the computer the student to do the simulation of, of uh, electron micrograph. So uh, I do the most recent experiment. Uh, other postdoc student, graduate student, are uh, also doing the uh, image calculation. So uh, that that was very good group. Hmm? Hmm. Okay, so it means so in Arizona State, so the, the high resolution image of the, um, the atomic car arms have been, yes, um, initiated and also the theoretical background was uh, also going well with uh, the experiments at that time. So, okay, so do, do you still remember someone that you worked uh, with? At that time, well, yeah, there, there are always uh, the uh, postdoc or student all the time come in, come out uh, from at the Arizona State University. So uh, when I was there, and then we did, like uh, the Michael Keith, um, he was uh, also a postdoc, and he, he he's uh, expert on image calculations. So. Uh, I collaborated with uh, the Mike Chief and also the uh, some group in 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 uh, in a mineralogy group in Arizona State and the solid state chemist and they have their own, own the uh, problems and, and uh, at that time beginning at the beginning we have only one microscope so uh, all the uh, people uh, come to this microscope and try to use and because. Uh, I was using the pointed filament. This is not easy to do, to, to work with. So uh, people, because uh, with this uh, pointed filament, uh, we can get the uh, good, good images. So people are waiting for the, for this pointed, use of pointed filament. And so uh, that was interest, interesting. And about the pointed filament, because this is started from Japan, and 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 actually the uh, this was uh, later on used for the for the field emission gun. So mm. like uh, the Albert Crew in the Chicago mm. University at that time, he utilized this pointed filament at the beginning, and, and uh, but also he 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 utilized this pointed filament as the field emission electron source. Okay. So uh, okay. this was uh, 1960s, okay, beginning of the 60s, and these people are very much interested in use the pointed uh, electron source, field emission mm -hmm. or, or electron source. So uh, this was a good good contribution, and and uh, for the high resolution microscopy, this is essential to get the uh, rather lighter, uh, the bright the uh, image to do the uh, high resolution microscopy. Okay, so you have some uh, some uh, special technique to have some nice coherency and uh, better brightness for the high resolution microscopes. Okay, so and and did, did, so are they, uh, was there any competition for the um, special resolution of the microscopes at that time or? No, at that time, the uh, I, I think uh, um, because uh, no one produced the uh, sort of same kind of uh, image, uh, quality, high quality images, 
even mm -hmm. even in, in the Siemens or Philips mm -hmm. microscope couldn't do this. So for a while, I was uh, we are the sort of uh, top runner in mm -hmm. in this uh, field. So uh, and 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 I I I, I said that all the time the people from England, the French, Denmark, the the uh, the uh, Sweden. So all the time the people come in, come out. So uh, we had a very mixture and 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 exchange the idea and talk about the problem. So uh, that that was uh, sort of golden time, nineteen seventy to eighty mm -hmm. in Arizona. Okay. Mm -hmm. So especially for amorphous uh, amorphous materials, people are working in the diffractions, but now you started to work on in 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 real space using the high resolution microscope so that, that's the first step that you later discover the carbon nanotubes so far as i understand okay so thank you very much for your explanation of your stay in the united states and europe so after that in 1982 you came back to japan to join a national project so for uh, it's uh, it's dedicated for the research of the ultra fine particles. Uh, would you please explain this project? Yes, this is uh, kind of first uh, big uh, Japanese government uh, research program. So uh, we are very nicely the, uh, founded. So uh, the uh, I I plan to build the uh, new microscope, particularly for 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 for. The looking at the uh, the fine particle nano nano crystal these days people say but at that time we call the outer fine particle so uh, and I the, my the part is doing the uh, characterize the uh, nano the nano particle the nano crystals and then the, some other other group produce the the, uh, the nano particles. So one one of the application of nanoparticle at that time is is to use uh, the iron Fe, iron mm -hmm. the small particle for uh, the uh, magnetic recording uh, tape recorder. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, because uh, the magnetic uh, material, so uh, we, these people try to make the uh, the small iron particle, not the oxide ox, iron oxide the metal particle is better. So uh, th th then, then uh, the uh, because iron is uh, nicely easily oxidized after you you prepare this particle. If you take out the uh, air, then 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 then, then it's burned. So uh, one time I would try to coating the, uh, the iron particle, small particle, with the uh, hydrocarbon gas. Mm. So uh, I, I I could nicely coat the small iron particle, and later on that, that was very accidentally I was great discover discovered from this uh, experience. Anyway, so uh, then, then uh, um, because uh, I, I think the uh, electron microscopist uh, the uh, century basically interested in anything small, okay. Yeah. So uh, the uh, I think the the uh, during the uh, coating the iron particle later on the uh, the uh, I, I accidentally find found the uh, carbon nanotube from this uh, iron particles. So I, I I I can later explain this anyway. So. Uh, the, what I have been doing the old days, the, all these experience and the knowledge are somehow connected to the uh, discovery of carbon nanotube. Anything related somehow to this uh, work. So this is very interesting. Yes, okay. So uh, now, I mean, uh, we know that to make carbon nanotubes, we use ion particles as a catalyst and to use the hydrocarbon as a carbon source and we can make very nice carbon nanotubes. But of course, at that time, no one knew it and you just uh, accidentally did the similar experiments in 1980s. Yeah. Well, the, the, uh, about this, uh, the 
ultra fine particle, I I've got a, a nice uh, pride uh, pride from Japanese uh, physical physical society. Oh, yes. This is yes. the hmm. Nishina Memorial, the uh, award. Uh, that was the uh, I was the the the, the uh, looking at the gold particle. Okay, not the, the FE in this time. Yes. Mm. And then, then uh, I, I put the I evaporated the gold uh, cluster directly into the microscope on a specimen, so so that the no contamination. And then, then uh, I, I immediately find the uh, these small gold particle moving, <laughs> okay, under the electro beam, and uh, changing the uh, internal structure, the, or the twinning or exahedral ex phase and all the time. So uh, the, this was very unstable, the uh, metal structure under the electron beam. So this is a very curious uh, phenomena. And I, I remember I, I, I had this paper, uh, the, the physical review letter, and 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 uh, Art, Professor Archie Howey mentioned this this uh, discovery, and he he wrote this small the uh, uh, the uh, the small article in, in the Nature. I, I I think the how this happened, and and he, mm -hmm. he said he he, he said he expects maybe something in the Coulomb explosion taking place in the, in the gold particle. So still, this is a mystery. You, if you put these gold particles under the electron beam, they, they are they, they are moving. Okay. So uh, I, I think the uh, melting point might be going down, or some electron the uh, irradiation do many things <laughs> these days we know. And so, uh, but the phenomena, the uh, right. This is the uh, first uh, the uh, things the uh, introduced the uh, high resolution microscopy in high resolution mode because if you put the uh, movie the moving the uh, the uh, device the camera usually you couldn't get the uh, atomic image um, you you lose the uh, the uh, resolution. But this microscope could do it because uh, I could do the uh, the high resolution, and then even I, I see the uh, gold uh, column in in small particles. So uh, this is the uh, the also a new thing. I, I I tell you, my interest in the microscopy is that uh, the uh, you cannot the, the, no one do cannot do it. Um, so I, I, I challenge to do so, I, I understand. Um, because always I, I try to do something, the, uh, something new, because uh, I, I just mentioned the, the I utilize uh, high resolution microscopy to the small particle uh, to, and, and, and the dynamics, the moving, movies, okay? Mm. So, uh, Maybe you you can have the one one the, the, the picture you know the conventional pictures, but the, but the video recording is is something else. So uh, you have to do many things to to, to do this. So uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So you you need high spatial resolution and high time resolution too, right? So right. Right. So you need um, correct, uh, suitable recording device, but also you need a bright source. And uh, yes, so time resolution is one of the most important right. part for the electron microscope. But just, right. just a simple question. You, at that time in, in this um, big project in the Japan, which microscope were you using? No, I, the, uh, because uh, I, I tried to, to build the uh, special the microscope for the, this particular the uh, particle, particular iron particle, okay, they cannot mm. expose to the air. So we directly put the specimen into the four pieces. Mm. So uh, this was built by the, uh, it's now the uh, finished, the uh, top cone. 
topical microscope. Um, um, so uh, at that time it was Akashi. Akashi, they... Akashi, sorry, Akashi, Akashi company was mm. building this microscope, and th that was the first one, <laughs> first uh, microscope they, they built, and then, um, but the, this is uh, very nice. Um, so later on, I, I, I also used the Akashi microscope for the, my work, other work. Mm. Uh, now, carbon nanotube are mostly done with this microscope, Akashi microscope, the Topcon okay. microscope. Okay, Topcon. So you are using the first yeah. prototype of the Topcon uh, company at that right, time. Right, right. Okay, right. very good, yes. Okay, so yes, we had the story about your famous work um, that you just uh, videotaped the instability of the gold nanoparticles. But I think this uh, uh, instability of the gold nanoparticles has some impact also on the catalyst uh, research field. Right, right. Uh, in, in Japan, the, uh, the, at that time, the, the uh, Professor Haruta, Haruta, he was the uh, first guy disco discovered the, the activity, catalytic activity of the gold uh, particle. No, the yeah. mm -hmm. But but when he published his work, and the big big professor uh, expert, the, the catalyst, they don't uh, they don't agree with his discovery. Gold mm -hmm. couldn't be the catalyst. But so he, he he did many things and uh, and I I published this gold particle instability. He immediately came to my my lab, uh, and then then he he brought me the uh, his gold uh, catalyst, and then of course uh, I, I I I put them the uh, in, in in the new microscope, and I I, I helped him to to do the uh, to analysis his uh, the gold particle but interestingly the uh, that papers uh, are nicely quite a big the uh, impact to the catalyst the, even these days so google citation is quite high uh, amazing. okay yes it's highly yes. cited paper in gold right. uh, catalyst right. yes yeah, yeah. I mean, this is just a less famous work of yours because uh, <laughs> uh, not so many people know that. All right. Hmm? Okay. Okay. Thank you. So then, then, so you moved to a Japanese electronics company, NEC. Yeah. Right. So why was that? Well, the uh, because uh, the, uh, th this is also my challenge to build the uh, the. Uh, Ultra high vacuum electron microscope with high high resolution mode, because uh, this was the beginning of uh, 1990. So uh, 80s, uh, the uh, famous the uh, the uh, Nobel laureate um, to do the uh, uh, analysis of silicon, the clean surface seven by seven. So uh, all this uh, work are done by the uh, stem, the, uh, the microscope, or the uh, surface diffraction, the, uh, the study. So uh, I, I thought maybe uh, I, I can do the uh, surface uh, imaging uh, using the transmission mode. So uh, to do this, uh, we really need the, uh, the clean silicon surface in so uh, I this time I asked the JOL to to build the uh, ultra high vacuum the, and the high resolution microscope, and they already built built the uh, the high vacuum the the uh, microscope for the Professor Takayanagi. He is yeah. one of the uh, the uh, pioneer of seven by seven sequence mm. clean surface. Anyway. So, but but the, his instrument is just the diffraction, so no, no high resolution mode. So uh, I, I asked the JOL, why, why don't we make the uh, high resolution, the, uh, the high vacuum microscope? So uh, I, I think I wait two years, okay, oh. to, to, to have this microscope. 
and then 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 uh, we I did we did some very good work um, collaborating with uh, like li like uh, the uh, Lori Mark, Lori Mark mm. the the uh, uh, in the Chicago not not the Chicago University Northwestern University anyway. So uh, I, I took the uh, seven by seven plan view the uh, image of clean surface. Mm. So uh, plan view. So uh, the uh, film has the uh, two surf two surfaces, top and the bottom, and both had a clean surface, okay, seven by seven. So uh, we, we we separate out the uh, top and the bottom, and and uh, do some the image processing. So we could get nice seven by seven the atomic images from this microscope. However, unfortunately, or well, fortunately, at the same time, I I came across the carbon nanochip. Okay. <laughs> okay. So my interest moved to the carbon nanochip. <laughs> so uh, I I didn't uh, I didn't push this uh, high resolution. The uh, the uh, green surface out of microscopy on mm. on silicon because I was working for the NEC the uh, mm. world top uh, the, uh, the semiconductor company at that time okay so uh, silicon no it's yeah, yeah. at that time <laughs> not now <laughs> silicon is is very important and everybody working on the, the silicon green surface so uh, we. I had a couple of uh, papers, uh, the uh, physical review letters. Um, so uh, that is about this microscope, and then, and then that, after that, I, I the mostly moved to the carbon nanotube. Okay. Yes. So yes. Uh, finally, we arrived at the discovery of carbon nanotube. It was uh, 1991, right? Right. So, so how how it happened? I think it, the, the 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 year before, the the Kratzma reported um, how can I say um, uh, mass production of fluorescence, and it was just uh, one year after that you reported the carbon nanotubes with exactly the same uh, uh, equipment to right. produce. Um, so. Uh... Already at that time, uh, until that, uh, I had a lot of uh, the uh, knowledge about the uh, carbon, carbonaceous materials. So already I, I image, I, I took image of what the people call the onion, onion graphite, mm. very small, the, uh, the onion carbon multi shell, multi shell, the graphitic structures. So uh, and other uh, 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 the experience with amorphous carbon and even, even uh, the carbon nanotube uh, already I experienced with this. So uh, then uh, the uh, late the uh, late of nineteen eighties there was a big uh, the uh, the uh, uh, news about the, uh, the, uh, the 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 superconductor. No. Yes. Um, so uh, all the, the, the people talking about the uh, superconductivities uh, in any any meeting. So uh, mm. 1970s, um, 1990, the uh, autumn a fall meeting at MRS meeting in in Boston, I went to there. And I, I met the uh, I was presenting diamond papers. <laughs> not not carbon. <laughs> I, I was also doing the uh, thin film of diamond uh, growth in, in the uh, the NEC. So I, I I went there to present this uh, result, and and then I I, I met the uh, Harry Croto there. Harry <laughs> Croto, okay. Harry Croto. Hmm. Already, the, I I had I acquainted with him through this uh, onion type. For, carbon structures. So uh, he he asked me, why don't you do the uh, microscopy on, on the on the fuller mm -hmm. And so uh, with the microscope. 
So uh, after that, I came back from the Boston MRS meeting. Then I, I started to look, look for the, the, uh, the, the onion again, uh, carbon onion. So uh, then, then I, I looked at the, all kinds of uh, carbon materials, uh, and I put them in a microscope and check this onion. Mm -hmm. uh, because I was interested in the growth of onion, because growth of onion is uh, similar to the uh, how the carbon, the furlan, the molecules uh, built, the uh, growth. So I started with, with onion again. Mm -hmm. Then soon after the uh, not not yes, I I I saw the uh, onion structures in some materials, but also the uh, I, I saw the elongated, the carbonaceous material. Mm -hmm. So uh, my interest moved to this this way, <laughs> not 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 the the board, not, uh, but, yeah, yeah. needle. Mm -hmm. So actually, it turned out to be this is turned out to be a uh, carbon nanotube. Uh, the so, so a few layers, uh, double layers, uh, few layers. What we call the uh, multiple carbon nanotube these days. Mm -hmm. So uh, this was again accidentally I came across with <laughs> these structures. Um, so this, this was uh, two years later. I after joining the the, the NEC companies. Okay, so this is how the, your most famous paper in Nature, nineteen ninety one, which was one of the most cited uh, uh, papers in the in the history. So that was just a simple accident that you you found right. it. It's very right. right. But but mm -hmm. the uh, I, I I was I, I was telling when I go to some some the the uh, the uh, meeting because this is not not entirely the uh, accidental the uh, discovery because okay. uh, mm -hmm. already I had a lot of experience and knowledge about the microscopy small nanocrystal carbon and, mm -hmm. and the, so uh, all together you know. Uh, yeah, I, I, I push, they push me to, to find. Yeah, this. okay. It was a I, consequence. I tell you, tell you this citation, it's one single paper, mm -hmm. 1991. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I checked this morning, this is 56,000, nearly 57, uh, the, uh, yeah, 50, 57,000 citation. Okay. Only one paper, okay. Only one paper. <laughs> mm. yeah, still, still, I, growing. <laughs> still growing. Yeah, because I remember <laughs> some journals uh, counted the, all the uh, papers in, in, and they ranked in the history, and this your paper was on the very um, high. Okay, so, but this carbon nanotubes was discovered when you are working for uh, on the electronics company, NEC. And what was the response of the NEC? They uh, they quickly understood the, um, the importance of these uh, new materials. Well, the uh, because uh, industry people are rather conservative, they they are, they don't do the challenge. Okay, <laughs> so they don't don't support this uh, carbon nanotube project. Uh, interesting. But but uh, not not immediately for for the electronics uh, industry. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I think already I was with the with the NEC, but the uh, I think discovery was uh, purely I don't get any any support from the government uh, research program. But then after that, the I begin to get the uh, government fund to continue this uh, carbon nanotube research. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I think the, uh, I know the uh, immediately after the discovery of carbon nanotube, particularly for single wall carbon nanotube, some, some the group uh, the, the published the, uh, this carbon nanotube become very nice uh, semiconductor. Mm -hmm. So it can be built the uh, transistor. So they they showed the, the theoretically and also experimentally. So uh, there is the possibility to to apply this carbon nanotube to electronics, but it's not like a silicon electronics. Okay, you can make mm -hmm. 
super deep uh, the, the transistor, but just one. Mm -hmm. That industry people needs the millions of identical the uh, transistor. So mm -hmm. that's a different world. Yeah. Oh, okay. It was different for industry, but but your uh, discovery had a big impact in in science uh, viewpoint because there are so many PhD students uh, who are created on research of the nanotubes and uh, um, there are for for theory, chemist, uh, physics. There are so many people working in in carbon nanotubes in ninety nineties and the beginning of the the twenty first century. So then um, after that, so you you got many honors and prizes, medals from the world, especially you got the, you are the first uh, recipient of the Cabri Prize for nanoscience and nanotechnology. So uh, they recognize you as an initiative of the nanoscience and nanotechnology. So uh, how, how do you feel for that and uh, what's your your response about such uh, big honors well well the uh um the because uh because this, this is the uh, kind of first big surprise to me and uh, uh because they, they choose the uh um the four category the biology, biologists and 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 and, and uh, astronomies and nanoscience because so and then the Cabri uh, Prize is okay. Cabri Prize. I'm talking about yeah. Cabri Prize. Yeah. So uh, I, I think the later on the uh, like microscop microscopist the uh, Andre Andre Kuvanek got one a couple mm, yes. of years mm. ago. So uh, two years ago, yes. Mm. Two, two years ago, all right. Mm. And also Professor Midi Dresselhaus at MIT mm. Uh, mm. got also the, in, in this category. So uh, I, I think the uh, still um, nanoscience, nanotechnology is a lot, lot uh, has, has a lot of uh, sort of uh, expectation or what say the, uh, it's a lot of uh, dream uh, mm -hmm. with this micro material so mm -hmm. I, I think people enjoy it uh, if you forget about the business <laughs> <laughs> okay that's but, important but, but... to forget about the business okay <laughs> <laughs> okay so time is coming so I'd like to ask a few more questions so we would uh, appreciate if you can give some advice or some words to the younger scientists, especially in the field of material science or nano nanotechnologies. Well, the uh, because from my experience, when you go to some new new area, you have to be well prepared. Okay, you have mm -hmm. to prepare. Uh, you cannot get in without anything. So in my case, I, I think apparently I, I maybe I have prepared the uh, microscopy technique. Okay, so mm -hmm. so uh, with this technique, I I, I go to the the, uh, the material science. If you don't have the uh, young one, and the if you don't have anything, but the, the, how how do you battle? <laughs> how do you compete with the other, other big guys? So, so you have to have a very the special the uh, only one the technique or maybe uh, mm. theory or, or maybe technique or whatever so uh that means uh, to go to the new area you have to prepare uh, well mm. otherwise uh, you, you can not get a chance i think okay so we we need some weapon to go to the battlefield right, right. <laughs> that, that's right with that mm, weapon can you can't uh, we have to go battle with it. <laughs> okay, so the, the final question. So uh, what is your future dream? Future dream, okay. Uh, I don't have a big dream, but the, uh, in, in my lectures, uh, I, I, I think uh, I, I'm going to introduce the uh, new area. Um, this is also related to carbon nanotube, but uh, last year I, I extended it again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, discovers the what we call the uh, photo thermal the uh, acoustic it, it's mm -hmm. not a high frequency acoustic but the audible audible sound 
So uh, photothermal audible the uh, phenomenon. So uh, this is very interesting area. It's, it's not much in the uh, the complicated physics, uh, but the phenomena is very curious. So uh, I, I'm, I have been working on this material these these days. So. Uh, I think uh, I, I'm going to introduce uh, a little bit of the, the, this part, the, this uh, the uh, work I have done so far. So uh, I think in the big in the future, because I, I I'm going to be 84, <laughs> so uh, okay. much time left. So I have to do I have to do the uh, the what, what I want to do. So uh, okay. this is one of it. Okay, so very nice. So. Uh, yes, we are really looking forward to your lecture. I think it will be in the next month. Okay, so so you are going to show some your uh, not only for the nanotube, but you are going to show your new discovery. Right, right. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Yes. Um, okay, so do you have anything to add, or maybe we can finish here? Well, the uh, I I think the. Uh... In my lectures, uh, I, I think the uh, I, I don't like to to introduce the old stuff if I can, but, but the, I have to show the new one. But the uh, since, since uh, the uh, maybe uh, what I'm going to plan to in this lecture, I go through quickly the uh, my the experience uh, start from the the uh, Arizona State and then and then other projects. And, and, and then this just a little bit about this. Then the uh, last part, maybe at the beginning, uh, I, I, I want to, to describe the, uh, this new discovery. <laughs> OK, so, yes, we are, we are looking forward to, to hearing that. Uh, but of course, we are very much interested in your all the stuff because uh, all the young researchers don't know the, about the Arizona State activities at that time and how it how how difficult it was to discover carbon nanotube or such kind of things because it's quite nice that we, they can record your your efforts in 90s 70s 80s this is quite um, quite history so yeah I, of course uh, we are quite uh, uh, happy to hear your you know, all the uh, stuff, all the stuff, and the new research area. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Sumio. So, uh, can we finish here? Yes, I, I think so. Thank you very much for the uh, interesting talk. I'm not sure I, I could do it or not. Oh, it was perfect. Thank you very much.